Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Mrs. DBK. My name is Darlene, and we started uh, a study on the life of Joseph. In my last video, we did chapter 37, and um, I said that I would skip over chapter 38 because chapter 38 goes off of the story of Joseph, and it talks about one of his brothers and his daughter-in-law, Tamar, um, Judah and Tamar. Um, if you if you read that, that's fine if you like to read it. Um, but I said that I would skip over that because um, it's not talking about Joseph in that chapter. But from what you can get from that is life went on. Their life went on without Joseph. Because remember, we left off at his brother sold him to Ishmaelites and they took him down to Egypt. And so we're going to start in chapter 39. And um, first, let's just talk about some of the emotions Joseph probably felt after his brothers sold him into slavery. Um, if you can just imagine if it were you or me, you know, what emotions would we be feeling at about now? Um, because Joseph was human just like we are. And so um, you would think that uh, he would feel betrayed. He would be hurt. Probably shocked that, that his brothers would really go through with this. He might have even felt anger. Anger with them. Anger at God. Like, why God? Why did you allow this to happen to me? Some sadness some fear, anxiety, maybe even some shame, feeling rejected. And some would even feel bitter, feeling like there's no hope because here you are in a strange land. You know nobody. And, and, you, and you're all alone. You're feeling alone. So Joseph probably felt many of these emotions, if not all of them. And there's one, one verse that I want to share before I go into chapter 39, and that's Romans 8, 28. And it says, We know that all things work together for good, to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Every time I read the story of Joseph, I think about this Bible verse because it is so fitting in spite of everything that he went through. Um, in spite of everything that he went through, we're going to see how all things worked together for good. So chapter 39, Genesis. Now the Ishmaelites had taken Joseph to Egypt and sold him to Potiphar, one of the king's officers, who was the captain of the palace guard. The Lord was with Joseph and made him successful. He lived in the house of his Egyptian master who saw that the Lord was with Joseph and had made him successful in everything he did. Potiphar was pleased with him and made him his personal servant. So he put him in charge of his house and everything he owned. From then on, because of Joseph, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian and everything that he had in his house and in his fields. Potiphar turned over everything he had to the care of Joseph and did not concern himself with anything except the 
food he ate. So remember when we were talking about those emotions? In spite of those emotions that Joseph probably experienced, he still put his best foot forward. He had to have trusted the Lord because even though he's a slave, he is giving his best work. And the favor of the Lord is upon him. And the Lord gives him favor with Potiphar. Now, remember when we was uh, talking about the 37th chapter and how Jacob uh, was showing favoritism to Joseph. And we said, that can't be good. Well, man's favoritism is not good. But God's favoritism, God's favor is a blessing because God doesn't pick favorites. All of his children can have his favor. He doesn't just give some his favor and not others. If you are a child of God, you have the favor of God on your life. And so this is Joseph having the favor of God. And when you have the favor of God, others look at you and see that. Potiphar saw something different in Joseph. And he saw how everything that Joseph put his hands to was blessed. And he liked that. And he respected that. And he liked it so much until he promoted Joseph and and let him be in charge of his whole household. And so they're, they're, these are goals as a Christian. We want to walk in that favor of the Lord to the point where others can see a difference in our lives. And maybe we need to be promoted so that God can use us. The promotions that we get in life, the blessings that we get in life, it's not just for us. We're gonna see that it's for a reason um, when God gives us promotions and when he blesses us. So, so these promotions that Joseph is getting, um, this is just God moving him along getting him to a place where he wants him to be. So let's read on. It says, Joseph was well built and good looking. And after a while, his master's wife began to desire Joseph and asked him to go to bed with her. He refused and said to her, look, my master does not have to concern himself with anything in the house because I am here. He has put me in charge of everything he has. I have as much authority in this house as he has, and he has not kept back anything from me except you. How then could I do such an immoral thing? and sin against God. Although she asked Joseph day after day, he would not go to bed with her. Now, we see that Potiphar's wife started to lust after Joseph. And she tried to entice him. But here Joseph is showing integrity in the situation. And and I like that he's telling her, look, I'm not gonna do this because this, this is wickedness and this is sin in the sight of God. I can't do this. Joseph is calling sin, sin. And, and if you notice, we've come to a place and time in this world where even Christians don't want to call sin, sin. 
We want to sugarcoat. We want to make excuses. We want to say that, yes, God is love. He loves us. And no matter what we do. But if the Bible says, if God says that certain actions are sin, then we should say that also, that it's sin. And here, Potiphar's wife would have been committing adultery. Joseph would have been committing fornication. And he said, no, I'm not going to do it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Here we see Joseph in a situation. It might have been tempting to him, but even if it was, he stood up for what was right. And, and here the Bible in Corinthians is telling us that even when you're in a situation that is, that is tempting, that God will provide a way out so that you can endure it, basically so that you don't give in to it. Let's see what happens next. But one day, when Joseph went into the house to do his work, none of the house servants were there. That, that's pretty convenient right there, that house servants were not in the house. And it says, she caught him by his robe and said, come to bed with me. But he escaped and ran outside, leaving his robe in her hand. When she saw that he had left his robe and had run out of the house, she called to her house servants and said, look at this. This Hebrew that my husband brought to the house is insulting us. He came into my room and tried to rape me, but I screamed as loud as I could. When he heard me scream, he ran outside, leaving his robe beside me. Here we see that Joseph was again put in a situation and just like that scripture that I just read, that God will provide a way out, sometimes the way out can be as easy as saying no. Joseph had said no earlier. But then sometimes the way out is removing yourself from the situation. And this is what he did. He had to remove himself from that situation. And the Bible says he ran. He ran and she grabbed his coat and she held on to it. Sometimes we're in situations that might be tempting, but we know because of God's word that he always provides a way for us to get out of that situation. Again, sometimes it may just be saying no. Sometimes you may have to run, but do what you got to do. And if you know a situation is tempting, don't even put yourself in that situation. It says she kept his robe with her until Joseph's master came home. Then she told him the same story. That Hebrew slave that you brought here came into my room and insulted me. But when I screamed, he ran outside, leaving his robe beside me. Joseph's master was furious and had Joseph arrested and put in the prison. 
where the king's prisoners were kept. And there he stayed. But the Lord was with Joseph and blessed him so that the jailer was pleased with him. He put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and made him responsible for everything that was done in the prison. The jailer did not have to look after anything for which Joseph was responsible because the Lord was with Joseph and made him succeed in everything he did. Now this is where the last uh, video I was talking about that um, Potiphar um, was actually an executioner. Now you would think his wife accused Joseph of trying to rape her and the Bible says that he was furious. This is, this is a man's wife and another man is believed to be attacking her. He, he had the right as, as his position. If he wanted to execute Joseph, he could have. We see another situation where Joseph was in a almost death situation where his brothers wanted to kill him. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt like death was right there at the door, but then your life was spared? Here we see that Joseph's life was spared twice Instead of Potiphar executing him, he just put him in the prison. And this is all part of God's plan. I mean, when you look at it, you see all of these things that Joseph is going through. But yet, in spite of what he's going through, you can, you can see that God is still with him. And the Bible says God is with him. And God is giving him favor everywhere he goes, in spite of that he's a slave, in spite of that he's far away from his family, in spite of that he knows that his brothers hated him and sold him, in spite of all of this, God is with him. And God is giving him favor with those around him. And we see that when Potiphar puts him in prison, again, Joseph is still putting forth his best foot. He's putting forth excellence to the point where the jailer even sees this. And the jailer puts him in charge of all the prisoners and the jailhouse. And we see here again that God is preparing Joseph for what is to come. First, he was in charge of Potiphar's household, gaining experience. And now he's in charge of the prison, gaining experience that God is going to use. He probably doesn't know this at the time. But God knows that he's preparing him for what is to come. And when we think about it, the things that we go through in life, everything we go through in life is preparing us for what God has for us to do. No matter how traumatic it may seem, God is going to use it. As we see with Joseph, everything is a, is, a, is a stepping stone. Everything that he's going through is a stepping stone, getting him closer to, to where the Lord needs him to be. So God doesn't call us into ministry without preparing us. Now, over the years, I've heard people over and over say, um, I can't, I don't think I could do this for God, or I don't think I could do that for God because I don't have experience, I'm, I'm not prepared. But you are, you are prepared. 
Because again, everything that you've been through in your life, even before you came to God, those experiences that you had before you came to God, God can use them and they can they can still be part of your preparation. What about people who have been on drugs before they came to God? And they came to God, they got cleaned up, and then they start a ministry to those who are drug addicts. God used their experience before they even came to him. He used that. So God can use anything. He can use anyone. And so Proverbs 3, 3 through 4 says, Never let loving devotion or faithfulness leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will find favor and high regard in the sight of God and man. And this is what Joseph did. He was devoted to God in spite of his circumstances. He was faithful to God in spite of his circumstances. And because of that, he had favor with God and with man. And in Luke, it talks about even Jesus growing. And even Jesus had to grow in favor. Luke 2.52 says, Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So thank God for favor. And this is the end of chapter 39, Genesis 39, uh, the story of Joseph. And the next time that uh, I come, we will be doing um, Genesis, the 40th chapter. So thank you for stopping by and you be blessed.